In this video, I'm going to be updating my integration level software due to a fault in the head unit. Every 20 seconds, my head unit restarts itself due to overheating. However, a software glitch in the eye level puts it into a loop, so it can't recover. Therefore, a full integration level update will be required to solve this problem. If you go to a BMW dealer with this problem, with your car under warranty, they will simply update the system and solve the problem. If you don't have a warranty, they will ask you for a head unit replacement, which costs around £2,300. After connecting my ICOM and power supply to the car, I'm going on the either software update or replacement of control unit tab. They are both doing the same calculation on the measures plan. and waiting for my options to show up in the system. My actual problem, as I said before, with the head unit. However, uh, updating only head unit is not going to solve the problem. That's why we need ISTA to carry out a full update on every single ECU or control unit in your car to make everything work together as normal. Your other option to update your ECUs would be the ESYS software. However, it is quite risky and way too complicated comparing to ISTA. And also, even if you update your modules using ESYS, you still need to connect your car to ISTA to do the after work follow up processing to clear all the error codes and then do the initializations on certain components. That's why I choose ISTA for programming or coding on my ECUs. On the software update tab, you'll see your current programming on the eye level. Uh, actual one and the target one. So target one is going to be 2020 07525. That's what we are going to be upgrading it to, to solve the problem. If you remember my ISTA uh, video previously made on my channel, um, this target levels are completely depending on your ISTA and SDP version. So you may have 2022 um, SDP package and ISTA version, which then will show your target level as uh, up to the date with your ISTA package. This is going to be my very first uh, upgrade on the ECU softwares since uh, I bought the car for about four years. This is the first time I'm actually um, doing a software update on my eye level. And that's why I'm playing up with certain things and menus. I just try to understand what's going on in there. But overall, either software update tab or replacement of control unit is going to give you the same options to make a software update on your actual eye level. So this part of the video is going to show us the actual time and some notifications before you start anything on your car. BMW is quite strict on these. You need to make sure to follow every single one of them. Otherwise you're going to fall into a problem with any programming uh, which you will see in this video towards the end. It's not going to be successful in the first um, attempt. However, by the end of the video, I would be sorting everything and then my head unit is going to be working uh, as before. What I also love about ISTA is that there's no way that you can brick your ECUs uh, as it may be the case in ESIS. So 55 minutes uh, is the remaining time to complete all the programming and um, upgrading all the ECUs, doing a follow-up work, which is quite 
um, expected really. So I'm going to be uh, speeding up the video at certain points and trying to give you as much information as possible on the uh, update process. If you noticed in the beginning of the video, my screen was the smaller one, 6.5 inch iDrive display, which is my original one because uh, I tried to fix the uh, head unit problem using ESIS uh, by wiping out all my coding on it, uh, which didn't work. And therefore I didn't wanna uh, use Beamer code to code it back to 8.8 .8 inch display. So I kept the original smaller display to solve this problem. And of course, once the work is finished, I'm going to be coding my bigger screen using Beamer code and hoping that everything is going to be back to normal. My DIY power supply is there. The maximum amperage during the entire process um, fluctuates uh, between 20 to 29 amper which is very good to see. And you will see lots of uh, interesting things in your car, such as a um, different iDrive screen images, a maintenance image, or your instrument cluster is going to uh, go on and off. Uh, your windows at the end of the work are going to be initialized. So all sorts of different noises, even the air conditioning came on automatically. So ISTA controls everything uh, once you start the execution of the measures plan, you just need to sit tight and wait for the process to finish. So at this point, my connection between ICOM and the vehicle is going to be disrupted. That's why ISTA is giving me this message. Therefore, my first attempt, this whole process, as I'm screen recording, is not going to be successful. If you um, come across with any problem like this, all you need to do is just check your connections, uh, keep the driver door closed and seat belt should be buckled and then you can continue or repeat the same process. That's why ISTA is foolproof uh, regarding this problem or these sort of problems. Um, all you need to do is just repeat the process and continue and complete it. Ironically, my head unit was the only ECU got affected uh, by this disruption or maybe something else. So, programming on the head unit wasn't possible as you saw the symbols uh, icons that explains the reason why but as I said I'm going to be repeating this exact um, work once I finish with this screen recording and then things will be back to normal I have to say that, um, as I mentioned before in my previous video, that if things are working fine in your car, you don't need to update your software on your car, as some people claim that you get, a, for example, better uh, gear shifting abilities or performance upgrades, uh, which are quite um, of a myth, really. But if you have some sort of problems, if things are not working, ISTA software upgrade might solve the problem for you. By the end of the process, you may still see some error fault codes in your control unit tree with or without a success of this programming session. So all you need to do is just delete um, error codes and then your car should be back to the fully updated I-level integration uh, level version.
any sort of disruption during this uh, programming session or um, if you don't follow any of the instructions that ISTA shows up in the beginning uh, the result will be an incomplete programming session uh, all you need to do is just repeat the process because ISTA although it, it takes care of the things um, very simply uh, still like very strict software you need to meet every single prerequisites uh, to meet the end result and during this session as you can see I didn't want to go for a second uh, screen recording and editing process so exact same uh, session was uh, launched straight after this and then took me another 45 to 50 minutes to make the actual eye level software update and my head unit was back to normal So at this point I'm clearing the fault error codes and my head unit was back to normal as I said. Uh, I just need to use my backup from Beamer code to code it back to uh, a bigger screen and of course my other tweaks and coding on my car and the problem is solved. I hope you find the video useful and I'll see you in the next one.